Ben. And I'm Sawyer. And you're listening to Our House, A to Z. I almost forgot what rain looks like. Rain is a good thing. You did? Yeah. And then you were smacked in the face with a well, it was monsoon. Like, yeah, like went from like, like it had been weeks, I think, since real rain. We got that like little joke, like a joke of a rain. Okay, does really it rain. make you feel a little bit like you can better empathize with people like out west and stuff that are like in these crazy droughts and have like these crazy fires and stuff all the time? I don't know. I mean, you're living in an arid region you know, of the country. So I'm not really sure if it's the same. Like, this is not an arid region. This is New England. Right. I actually felt like I could empathize more with the Truman Show. Good morning! Morning! Good morning! <laughs> because, you remember that movie with Jim Carrey? I kind of do. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Well, I remember it being, like, it just, like, in a big, like, dome or something. Well, yeah, and, like, the rain starts, like, right over him, <laughs> and then it becomes, like, a big rain. Because I pull out of the driveway on one hot, steamy day and drive down the street, you know, and our yard is, like, parched. It's like flash paper. It's like a fire hazard. I have signs out in the yard that say... No flicking of cigarettes, you know, because yeah. of the... And I drive, like, a couple blocks down the street, and it's, like, pouring yeah. rain. And I'm like, oh, really? Okay. So these people's grass is going to live, but not ours. Okay. I know. I got nervous because everybody had said everything got hit with rain, and I got home, and it was like... Everything was dry. Like, the, the, yeah. <laughs> the road was dry. And then my neighbor was like, oh, no, we got hit. But everything was so hot, it just, like, yeah, dried right evaporated. away. Yeah, So we're finally seeing some rain. So it was very exciting because it's, it's been late. sad. It's been a little bit sad to watch everything just crust over. Yeah. Like crusty. Well, fortunately, we had our beds irrigated, but the stuff in the yard, I mean, we have plants that probably just aren't going to live. Yeah. So we'll see. Including like trees, possibly. Yeah. New trees that bummer. just didn't get enough. So yeah. that'd be a big bummer. Or too much, like when I just turned the hose on it and left it and forgot and left for the day. That was only like five hours. It's not a big deal. It it's not like, like we're in the middle time. of a drought or anything. <laughs> But by the way, I'd like to say Rehoboth's not on a water ban. So. It can't be because we have wells. We have wells. That's true. Yeah, so. which is great. Thank you, Lord. All right, so that's that. So deep that's wells. the rain check. Stirring up deep wells. What else? What else is there? Uh, well, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. There is a We're lot coming going in on. hot on this school year. Yep. Just getting more and more excited. We have families signing up. We have three classes that are closed already. Yep. That are full, and I don't know. I just see the Lord all over it. Yeah, Super it's, excited. It's pretty exciting. See little little bitty kids coming in for kindergarten screening yeah. is like my favorite. It's I know, and like awesome. I said last week, it's been cool to see all the rooms starting to come together. So yeah. that's not just for Kings. That's for our his kids like Sundays too. Yeah. yeah. So this will be the very first time that we have classes like in individual classrooms Correct. since we have been a church. It's amazing. So it's pretty amazing 11 years in, but just to have our kids in classrooms is going to be really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. We're super psyched about that yeah. and just blessed and feel like, yeah. okay, Lord, like, you know, we need It's you. like the end is in sight for that is amazing yeah. yeah and then there's still so much underway yeah so just had a great fireside again like so many awesome people that the lord's bringing into the church and you know it just reminds you every time that our stories are so important mm -hmm. i feel like i hear people's stories and i'm like man you hear somebody else and you're like oh that tell me a little bit about yourself but to that person that's who they are right like that's not just like a here's what happened today mm -hmm. it's like a here's my life here's how i've arrived at who i am right, right now and it's crazy it's a lot yeah one thing i always love about fireside and fireside if you are not not familiar with it is like a welcome night for anybody who's newer to our church family. So we kind of invite people to come out. One thing I always love about Fireside is how I feel like it brings so much unity, not just to the group that's there, but even to like the staff and the elders that are there. It's like such a great reminder that nobody is walking this journey alone. Mm. And I think so many people come in to church and kind of feel like nobody's going to understand what I've been through. Nobody has experienced what I have either with church or in a life or with broken families or the trauma that I've been through or the drug addiction that I've been through or the 30 years of addiction that I've lived in. No one's going to understand that. Yeah. Like, how can I go to a church? All these people are perfect. All these people do everything right. Yes. You walk through into a fireside and what you realize is literally every single person person in the room has a story of brokenness yep. somewhere. And it's so cool how God even brings that group together because sometimes there's like this abnormally high percentage of people there that have like very similar stories. Right. Just for that sake. I know. And it seems like every fireside, there's like a theme to it. And this one was no exception. It was like, everyone's like, wow, I feel like we're all saying the same thing. Yeah. And it's like, yes, you are. But I think it just creates like this beautiful picture for Sunday mornings when, you know, I have 
the privilege of like looking from the stage because you get to see everybody and you know so many stories. And I think it's so cool to kind of see how the Lord has just like tied so many people in their stories and brought everybody together is crazy. Yeah, I love it. And it's exciting to me. And I'm just encouraged by what people have been through. You know, yeah. I know people who have turned their backs on ministry, turned their backs on God because of things they've been through. And then you hear other people who have been through like it makes that story sound like a Independence Day parade. Mm-hmm. I mean, you hear some people and you're like, whoa, your entire life has been like a battle. Yeah. It's been like a bloodbath. Right. And yet you're still going after God. Right. You're still fighting to hear his voice mm-hmm. and know what he has for you. And that to me, that is like so inspiring. Yeah. So I love it. It's good. Anyway. All right. So yes, that's what's going on here. Lots of cool stuff. All right. Are you ready for the topic of today? Why don't you tell me what it is? Well, I feel very like nervous about it for some reason. You should. You should feel nervous about every topic. (laughs) Lives are hanging in the balance. I don't know if that's true, but actually, now that I mentioned it, I do smell a little bit of mustiness. Okay. Now you were saying it doesn't smell in yeah. here, but I do smell a little bit. We had that might just be me. We had a sprinkler head get hit and just had tons of water pour into Every some of ground. the brand new yeah. section of the building. So that was really special. <laughs> it's always and We had cool. forgot about like this room to yeah. dry out. And it's a small room. Yeah. I can kind of smell it now that I'm thinking about it. Great. But Stop anyway, about it. aside from the musty smell, today we are going to talk about a lovely little five-letter word called pride. Ooh. Ooh. Boom, 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 boom. Ooh. I feel like pride is so hard to hit because it seems so broad mm. and it seems so like impossible or something because, and I know I say this on the podcast all the time, it seems like every time you come across like an issue or a struggle or something or a fear, or it's like, let's get to the bottom of that. Oh, like there's pride, like right at the bottom root of that. Yeah. And I mean, what do we read in the Bible? It's like, doesn't it say the Lord detests pride or the Lord hates pride? Yeah. Or like that pride cometh before the fall. But I mean, that's like, that's another one of those Proverbs, thank you very much. I just feel like it seems like something so hard to tackle because of the wide range that it covers or something, like how many places it affects. And we always think of pride and we think it like you'll hear the word like, oh, is that person like prideful or boastful or something? Uh And it's always like the same picture that comes to your head of like somebody who's like a bragger who's conceited who like just likes to talk about themselves and brag on everything they've ever done in life but unfortunately pride comes so much more stealthier than that yeah it it is it's such a blurry thing It's Mm -hmm. it's so ambiguous because you read letters from guys like paul and even the way the prophet spoke and there was an air of certainty and confidence in not just who god was everybody's like well i'm proud of who god is they were proud of who God was in them. Right. There was a right. certainty. It's not like Paul, like, but like the only thing I'm going to boast about is like yes. Christ yeah. and what he's done. Yeah. And what you have to boast about is the transformation that has taken place in you. It's right. like there still is a thing there. But to me, when you're talking about stealthy pride, and again, so everything for me comes through this filter of like Christianity and faith and ministry. And while there's a much bigger conversation about pride to be had, mm-hmm. I feel like my trigger is spiritual pride. Okay. And again, this is a narrow What do you thing. say when you mean my trigger? I don't know. I can deal with pride. I can deal with people's pride and see right immediately through to like where there's insecurity, yeah, yeah, to where yeah, there's yeah. fear, to yeah. where there's hurt, and how pride is just used to mask that yeah. very often. But spiritual pride, to me, that is a very dangerous thing because of how much damage you can do with that. And so I shut down. Like when somebody, mm-hmm. I, it's like, uh, I cannot receive anything from you. Interesting. And which is maybe an issue on my part. Like, <laughs> but when there's spiritual pride there or when there's pride associated with who you are yeah. in a in a spiritual role or right. in a spiritual position or a ministerial position. Or your gifting. Or your gifting, I'm like, yeah, you've got I'm nothing. We're done here. I know. So what is the context about when it says like pride comes before the fall? You know, like we hear that all the time. And I remember growing up and like my mom always being like, pride cometh before the fall. Your mom still pride, talks in King I James. <laughs> I love that. Long live the king. Well, she still reads King James. Yeah. So good, good for her. God bless her. I love it. So I hear that in my head in the King James version as well. Pride I, cometh I, before the fall. I'll tell you why pride comes before the fall. Because pride renders us dumb. Hmm. Pride renders us blind, yeah. ignorant. You You're get, focused on like one thing. Well, you get yourself. cocky in how sure you are of your footing 
right. in your step and that there's not the humility to say, wait a minute, I could trip at any moment. Right. And so I've got one eye on the horizon and another eye on my next step. Right. When we take the eye off the next step because we're so confident in how far we've come and yeah. how and how well we're paced and whatever, uh, you fall. Right. It's that easy. Like the second you take your eyes off from, you know, the path. Yeah. I know one thing that we talk a lot about here is um, kind of in reference to the scripture that says, humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And I feel like we continually go back to, okay, humble yourself, humble yourself. Like how humble can you get? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, because I can be a little bit devil's advocate is like sometimes I feel like there can be this pride in how humble we can be. Do you know what I mean? Which goes back to like your spiritual pride thing. Yeah. Where it's like, I am the least of these. Oh, I yeah. am so humble. I yeah. the lowest of the low and yeah. all humility all the time. And you're yeah. just like, I, the I... chief among sinners. <laughs> do you think that's bad that I think that sometimes? Probably. I but know. I do think that humility, I, I don't know. I have some theories on humility and one of them, I don't think it's a super foreign concept, but the idea that when you're too humble, you're just prideful again. Yeah. Because you're at a place where you think if you're so humble that you're disqualifying yourself from things that God's right. called you to. Right. You, I guess that's it. You yeah. have more pride. You have more confidence in your own estimation of yourself than what God's is. Right. And so that's why when it circles all the way back around to where it's kind of like you're still controlling something because you're so prideful that you think you deserve to or that you can mm -hmm. instead of being humble enough to say, no, I'm actually going to receive what uh, what good godly counsel says to me. Right. You know, so, yeah, there's a there's a pitfall on either side of the road. There definitely is. You know, and, and that's that's the truth. And I think that that is the the sneakiness of pride. It's not just the traditional poster child for right. what we usually think of. Right. And I love, of course, that like Jesus came as that perfect example for us. And, you know, you look at like his ministry and the three years that he was on earth traveling and doing ministry and teaching and talking to people and all of this. And it's like, even though he's saying things like I'm the way, the truth and the life, like there was nothing prideful about him mm -hmm. and his character. And there was this perfect walk of humility where it wasn't like the over humble card or do you know what I mean? But like, how yeah. do we reflect that like today? How do we do the same thing? Well, it's, it's such a balance. I think you know who the God piece is, but like who's the Bible figure that you think of when you think of pride? When you just said that, Paul. As Saul, when he was Saul, like came, for some reason, like came right to my okay. head. Yeah. Is that probably not? Who you're no, thinking well, of him? well, I, I just, I, I do. I think of the Pharisees too, and I, you know, Jesus accusation yeah. of them that he said that your whitewashed sepulchers or you know whitewashed vessels or whatever but it's a tomb it's like dead inside you know but i think of the whitewash and it's like okay someone's going to the trouble mm -hmm. of presenting themselves as right yeah or perfect or holy or pure and their pride now is in the way that it looks mm -hmm. the way that it comes across if i can sound holier than you right it's not if I really am, it's right. if I can sound that way. And I think that we start to believe our own press. We mm -hmm. start to believe what we say about ourselves rather than what God says about ourselves or rather than what the Holy Spirit's pointing out in us. We're turning, we're choosing a blind eye to that. And we're, what we're accepting instead as truth is the whitewash, the candy coating, the outside, you know, that's polished and, you know, nice. And so I think sometimes people can take a lot of pride in being contrary. People can take a lot of pride in in like, I'm going to be the one here that that can always point to something wrong. Right. You know, like, mm -hmm. well, as long as like, I'm the guy who can find the flaw, yeah. then I'm better than the, everybody else. You're in like, the I'm on a different level yeah, than everybody I'm, else. I'm here. hearing God in a way that no one else is hearing God. Right. I recognize what God's doing in a way that no one else is recognizing what God's doing. And, and the truth is, you may actually be that person, but unless you can present that the way that Christ does, right? then it's pride. Right. It's pride. So I just think, yeah, yeah, the spiritual piece of this can be devastating to believers. Yeah. And especially to the world. Yeah, and I do I think that that's so important too, because the way that Jesus led and taught was always directing to the Father. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. always directing people to the Father. And I feel like a lot of times 
especially like ministerial leaders or church leaders, a lot of times it points back to themselves. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like where it feels like you don't know this, but like I understand this and I have the answers. So if you come to me for the answers, like, Mm -hmm. and don't go anywhere else. Right. Because that's like not as wise for you. Right. But you need to come to me for the answers. And I think a lot of times it's what left like salty tastes in people's mouth in the last few decades. I think about church Mm -hmm. is like the arrogance and pride of ministerial leaders. Yeah. It's like you can't ever receive anything from someone who is lower than you or right. who doesn't know enough, which is like pretty much the opposite of what Jesus teaches. Right. And I do think we have to be really careful about that. Yeah. That's one of the things I love about the open mic on Sundays and people bringing prophetic words. I think there's a big combination to me. It is very betraying of spiritual pride. Hmm. Like you only have to sit in a month of Sundays You don't even have to have a lot of discernment. You can feel out. You can smell spiritual pride when someone is so sure that they're the one, that they're this, that they're that. However, there's also this other thing that that breaks um, a lot of that power of pride when someone very humbly comes up and very sort of not so confident in who they are, but feeling almost like a fire within them Mm -hmm. to like, I have to share this is what God put on me. And then you hear it and you're like, oh, that's what a word from the Lord sounds like. Right. Because it's coming through a vessel of humility. Yeah. That's know, what a word, word of the Lord. from the Lord can come from somebody who has who's prideful. I know, but I can't hear them very well. It's harder, well. yeah. <laughs> it's I harder know. for me because I I, I'm like, yeah, I can't quite get past how sure you are of yourself. <laughs> like you are so sure of yourself. And this is going to sound ironic because I am somebody who has probably been accused of being arrogant or prideful. Uh, not probably. I mean – I know people have said, like, you're arrogant, you're cocky, or whatever. And I think that there are places where I know that I come across that way, you know, because of what I am so sure of. Hmm. Maybe things I shouldn't be so sure of. But I don't think any of it is apart from the things that God is doing. Right. You know, if I come through and, like, what I'm not, well, I'm not prideful in the state of my yard right now. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not prideful in my house. I'm not prideful in my car. I'm not prideful in my whatever it is like right. you know but what i am super prideful is is the things that i can point to and say look what god's doing there right look how god's using this look how god took that yeah and i think there are some people that are just more naturally confident you know like they're just more confident maybe everybody should be that confident or maybe and maybe those people just naturally don't struggle with insecurity yeah i mean i i get it i just feel like i don't think there's anything wrong with being confident i think as long as you know what your confidence is in and it's like I'm confident in, I don't, I can't even think of the exact words of the verse right now, but it's like, my confidence is in the Lord. Like, that's where my confidence is. Everything that I have and everything that I do and everything yeah. that I am, if there's confidence there, it's because the Lord has, like, done it in me. Yeah. You know? What would you say, is there a way, like, what is the line for confidence and pride? Yeah. Like, how do we stop ourselves from dancing over that line constantly? I think it has to do with, like, how you kind of start off the whole pride cometh before the fall thing. I think that if you take your eyes off of the way, right? So Jesus says, you just said, I am the way, right? I am the way. So if Jesus is the way, and we can literally think of him as the path that we're on, okay? When we take our eyes off of that path... I think we've just crossed over from just confidence in the fact that we're on the path, confidence that we're going the right direction, Mm -hmm. confidence that, you know, we're at the right speed, that we're we're attaining day by day more and more of what he set before us. Right. When our eyes come off of that and now it's on look at me, my eyes are on me or my eyes are on who's following me, like look at at what's, you know, happening in in my wake, Mm -hmm. we've just crossed over from confidence into pride. And as soon as our eyes lift up, here comes the fall. Yeah. You know, and so I think that for me, that's a good rubric. And I think for people out there who are confident, like, please be confident. In fact, I'm almost reluctant to do, if it wasn't for how much I despise spiritual pride, I would be reluctant to do a podcast on pride because I actually feel like people need to be more confident mm-hmm. right now. In who they are as the, like, yeah. in the Lord. And in the fact that like, man, if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, the hesitation and the right. doubt and right. the fear and the what if this, what right. if I miss, right. what if, the, what if this, I know. it's like that, I feel like. I want to counterbalance this with the, like, you need You can. You can do it right now. Yeah, I know. But 
I, but I don't want to like miss our theme here because I think God does want to address that. Yeah. Forever, God wants to address Next that. Next week, we can talk about confidence. Well, I see the majority of believers right now, I think, are struggling more with a doubt and a fear mm. and a reluctance to step out. For sure. I totally agree. And, and their eyes might be down on the path and they're still just paralyzed in taking the next step forward. And then you have the people that are so sure of who they are that their eyes yeah. left Jesus and, you know, they, they don't even know where they're going anymore. They're just so sure of themselves. Right. So I love when you run into somebody who is so confident in the Lord and is so in touch with like the Holy Spirit and like they don't have that spiritual pride thing. It's like so refreshing and it's so nice. And I think sometimes when, you know, I've talked about this before where it's like our church community is very spiritually charged and it's awesome. But a lot of times that does come with like that spiritual pride part too. And yeah. it usually starts by like meeting somebody and them telling you like every single thing that they've ever done, yeah. like in ministry in their whole entire life. And you're like, oh, hi, like I'm Ashley. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And you're like, just kind of like, like, what is that in us that says like, I need to validate myself to yeah. these people, or right? like I need to let somebody know what I'm capable, what I'm of. capable of, yeah, without like showing them who Christ is in me first. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I do, and so I'll I'll say this: I think that sometimes pride is the byproduct of uh, self preservation. Yeah, and if you're in an environment, let's say like so many people who have come here, let's say you've come out of a situation where you were um, the object of accusation or you were sort of rejected right. or you your gifts weren't accepted. Now, maybe it was not the Lord and maybe everything was done in flesh. Maybe you were 100% right. But what the enemy does is use that to create this sort of cycle mm-hmm. where we a pattern is developed where we're going from church to church and we're going in and we know this. You and I have had how many conversations with people who they're coming in and they're, they're almost expecting expecting to be rejected. Yeah. They're expecting to be despised. They're right. expecting, yep, well, I'm a prophet and you're not going to welcome me here. Right. And I'm like, well, actually, there's two dozen prophets here that you can talk to about like what it looks like to be a prophet in this house. Right. You know, but you're so anticipating that. And and so what that does is over time, you, you grow more and more prideful in you're right and everybody's wrong. Mm-hmm. You're right and you're going to be accused for it. You're right and no one's going to accept you. You're right and and you fill in the blank. And so the more and more that happens, the more polarizing it becomes for people to where the church becomes your enemy. Right. Instead of the body that you're called to. Right. And, and then I, it's just like you and the Lord, you know, like we see yeah. that all the time is yeah. like the just me and the Lord and like nobody understands us. And like these little peon people, like church right. people who just play church every Sunday don't get it. Right. Like what me and the Lord have and what we are seeing going on here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I feel like we've seen that so often and that right. is like so hard for me because I feel like I, it's like not Jesus. Right. Who says out of the mouths of babes, right? Like, like the least among you. Right. You know, and when the Holy Spirit comes, the weakest will be like David. You know, that's what the prophets say. That's uh, is that Zechariah? I think maybe I don't know one of the minors, and uh, and and the Holy Spirit becomes your teacher. So it's like, wait a minute, like you can't say that somebody else who you feel like you're above isn't going to get it right as often as you do. Yeah. Or, or sometimes they're not going to get it right at all, or I'm just never going to be able to receive from you. I remember listening to a podcast about um, sort of the downfall of a big uh, a big uh, Christian leader name back in the early 2000s. And they were talking about how who was his mentor going to be. Yeah. And people were challenging him, like, who can you receive from? Right. Like, who's going to be your spiritual, like, accountability and mentor? And the answer was, well... I can't have this great man of God be my mentor because his church isn't as big as mine. Right, And right. I can't have this great man of God being my mentor because his ministry isn't as big as mine. And I've outpaced this guy and that one and this one. And it's like, okay, congratulations. You made it to the top of the church size mountain. Yep. But you're a long way from the intimacy with God mountain. Yeah, you're absolutely. a long way from the humble thyself in the sight of the Lord mountain. Yeah, yeah. And so I think when well, we— Well, I love the second part of that is and he will lift you up. 
Like, yeah, exactly. He does that yeah, part. He exalts it. Yeah, not absolutely. you. Absolutely. He, he lives up the lowly. But yeah. you have to start at lowly. Right. And so that can be a dangerous place when we say, well, I've been doing this for longer than this person or I've got, I've got, I've, you know, this isn't my first rodeo. I've heard people in the church say that, mm-hmm. you know, to me as a young pastor. Yeah. And it's like, I realize that, but you probably could mess up your second rodeo too yeah. and your third and your fourth and your fifth. Right. You know, it's good. So some stuff there. I know. There's a lot of stuff there. There's a lot of stuff there. Yeah. So. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And the false humility. Oh, my God, Lord, cure us of this. Break this off us. The false humility where you like, you have to make the obligatory statement that like, oh, no, I am susceptible to this too. Yeah. Like, and I feel like sometimes when just like, okay, you, you're you not like vindicating the situation by throwing that one liner in there. Like, I, I'm also able to trip. I might stumble. Right. I right. might whatever. It's like, it's not about whether or not you might. Everybody knows that. It's the posture of your heart and right. how you're presenting your observations. Right. And if that posture is coming across like nobody's getting this but me, mm-hmm. well, then – you're you're believing your own press. Yeah, it's you know? good. Yeah, and I think a lot of times um, we're not even verbal about our pride, but we internalize it and we think through things that we are above others. Or um, I think a lot of times it comes out in a critical spirit, and that's like something that I've had to like work on myself for the last ten years. Has been a lot of focus on okay, what are my first thoughts when I see something that I feel like people should have grown past or in my head, I'm just kind of like, yeah, but I, I I'll tell you what I think yours is. Okay. Right this here. Is, live, oh, live oh, good. On the air. Wow. I'm you so glad we're this? doing this yeah. now. Okay. I, I was just being very vulnerable and saying that I, I have to like deal with that, like inner critic yeah, but to I, myself and to other people. What I, I think what it is for you is you, you've held yourself back from doing a lot of things because you know that you, there are like, well, I might not be the most renowned voice in this, or I might not have this 100% right. And so because of your wiring and your type, you choose to disqualify yourself from a thing or hold yourself back from a thing. And then when someone else doesn't hold themselves back from it, you're like, wait a minute. They should have held themselves back. They should have held themselves back from it. That's what it is. It's like, no, no, like you're not the I know, and that is a little bit, I, I do have that either. like a little bit of, not a little bit, a lot of it of like perfectionist improver thing. Like I, I do have that going on and it's not always just to be, it's not just to be critical. But Sometimes I don't I'm think like, it's This could pride. be better. This could be. Yeah. I don't, I don't see that as pride. I see it as, I, I see it as like the, the perfection thing. You're like, if there's one thing that could be wrong about this, then I'm going to, I'm going to, I would rather not have the one thing be wrong and 99 be right. I know. So that's bad. Maybe, but you know, I don't think it's as bad as pride. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, thanks, babe. Yeah, I like. I'm trying to decide if I'm encouraged by that or not. Mm, but yeah, okay. You can. I'll think about work it. That out with a little trembling. bit longer. Uh, anyway, I think that's good, and I love our church. I love that somehow there's even a grace for pride here, um, which I can't figure that out because I have none. Uh, but somehow it's coming from somewhere. I don't feel like you have grace for pride either. Um, I don't really want either one of us to. But I think Jesus I think we does have grace for everything. I know Jesus has grace for pride, um, but it's it, it somehow our church is is remarkably still able to receive, and so I, I love that, and I I pray that there's an accountability for it though, yeah, because that's the really hard thing about pride is usually pride negates accountability. So how do you hold accountable someone who's prideful? You, it has to come from someone who's higher. Right. It has to come from someone who's more qualified because if that's who, if that's where your thinking is, that's the only person you can receive from mm-hmm. who's the greater one. And uh, and I believe at times like that, God will work within the constructs of man to bring correction because that's the only way correction will come. Mm-hmm. But holding each other accountable as the body of Christ. Good. Got to do it. Pride cometh before the fall. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> and the crazy thing is that usually the ones who are spiritually more mature are spiritually more mature enough to be humble. Yeah, that's true. So they're like, they're like, no, I'll keep my mouth shut and just let them fall. <laughs> so anyway, there's a lot there. I don't even have to say anything. Yeah, yeah. God will sort this out yep. and you'll fall on your face. And then, you know, I'll be there to help remind you of why that happened. <laughs> 
What a blessing. <laughs> what a blessing. All right, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, your mercy and your grace. And we thank you, Lord, that you love us even when we're hung up on ourselves. And um, Lord, we pray that uh, we would move past pride, that we would leave it in our dust. And God, that we would um, keep moving forward. Lord, as we climb this mountain, Lord, that our spirit would stay low, uh, that our that our inner being would would respond to that desire to be lowly so that when we're lifted up, it's you who does the lifting and not us, God. So we love you. We pray um, that you would help us to see right through spiritual pride in ourselves uh, and in each other, that we would um, hold each other accountable and that we would challenge each other in places where we think we're seeing that and where we think we're discerning that. So Lord, um, give us your sight and your uh, and your words to do that appropriately. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, our house friends and family, thanks for stopping by today, guys, and we will see you here next Friday. This is Nestor. And I'm Willa. This is our house from A to Z. Thanks for coming over. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the rite of passage. <laughs>